This is The Culture. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave Podcast. We are here to talk to you guys about the newest Netflix series, Griselda, which stars Sofia Vergara playing Griselda Blanco, the uh, famous um, drug peddler (laughs) and murderer. So many things to describe her. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darren Scalamoni. I am joined this time by Liz Seiko. Hello, everybody. Hello, Liz. Hello. Um, So... I brought this up to you a couple weeks ago. I was like, who wants to watch this show so we can cover it for the channel? Because I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. And you jumped on board. And we have a six-episode limited series. It came out... um, By the time we're recording this, it came out uh, four days ago. So we did... Basically, we did the binge. We did the Netflix binge. Um, And the thing that was most intriguing to me, which it was to what it seems like most people, is that uh, Sofia Vergara was embodying this horrible woman. Um, and sometimes because she's out of the limelight, because modern family has been gone and Mm -hmm. done for so long, it's like, you forget that she was like an icon in sitcom television throughout like the late two thousands and early 2010s. You completely forget that in this show right away. So I do want to start with the fact, uh, just ask you about her portrayal as Griselda Blanco and just quick thoughts on the series overall before we get into spoilers. Um, yeah, so to start off, I really didn't know much about this the sh- the show before Netflix did its typical countdown on its like main page. You know how it's been doing that, like oh, two days and yeah, like yeah. twelve hours until <laughs> like the Griselda premiere. And the I don't know the picture that they chose t- of her to promote does not look like Sofia Vergara at all. And so I didn't really make the connection until you mentioned it and we're like, I want to do, like, can somebody watch this with me? And I was like, okay, let me look up a little bit. And again, because I'm going on the path of not researching, like, films and TV shows before I watch because it just gets ruined most of the time, I was like, okay, her name's connected to it. Let me see. I didn't realize she was playing the lead person. Not until about probably, like, 10 minutes into the show um, because, I mean, this isn't a spoiler. You can see it from the images and all they're talking about. They do a lot of makeup, hair, prosthetics to her to transform her into Griselda. Um, And the opening shot of her finally showing her face, it really doesn't look like Sophia at all. And so I was kind of taken back. Um, But I, first thoughts, she was incredible in this i think it's an incredibly smart choice that she made for her career um i think this is going to give her a lot more opportunity because uh one it's honestly probably mostly in spanish this show too which i mean it's her native language Mm -hmm. so it's nice to see her not playing a character who just has a spanish accent but actually is able to speak how she normally does um and it's just a really great flip for her to not just be playing like the like gorgeous stepmom housewife she's coming in and she's literally a woman that's running like trying to run the biggest cartel in miami yeah um she for me was the selling point for this show. I think overall it's good. I think that Netflix did a really great job also of keeping it to six episodes. They didn't make it too long. They didn't shove it into a movie that then feels bloated at like three hour runtime. Um, so they did really smart with that. But I think the story um, is an interesting one. You could say you've heard it before since it's kind of in that realm of just like drug dealing smuggling in miami in the 70s 80s at that time but for me her performance really was the thing that did a home run for them. yeah I, I definitely think that i can understand how some people may look at it as formulaic especially being on netflix and with uh, a show like narcos kind of coming before it and telling a similar story about pablo escobar but i do love and this isn't i mean a major spoiler in terms of story but i do love how they sort of make it very obvious to the viewer right away that when the show opens up with a quote from Pablo Escobar mm-hmm. talking about how she was like the most feared woman in, in the world that he's ever come across. Yeah. That like sets the tone for being like, what am I about to get myself into? I know with this. And I mean, did you know anything about her? I knew nothing the, like, about actual her. So woman? I had never, I had never heard of her. Um, I unfortunately didn't have the benefit of like 
not knowing Sophia wasn't going to be in it or like being taken <laughs> aback because I remember this getting reported on okay, probably yeah. like a year and a half, two years ago that she was doing something like this. And my first thought, though, I do respect her as a comedic actress. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty honest. Like, I'll take a look at her IMDb really quick. I don't know if I've ever seen anything else she's ever done other than Modern Family. Oh, she was in Chef. But like, like, and does she play maybe his wife? I don't remember. But the only things that I can remember her from was her sitcom work. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously an entirely different road that we go down with this show. Um, and I agree with you. I, I do think that she's the anchor that sort of separates this from something that could be formulaic. I also do think, though, that the ensemble um, is better than most ensembles in uh, Netflix dramas, I'll say. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to I don't want to categorize all current dramatic shows, but Netflix has this tendency of like sort of having these great lead pieces in certain shows and then the ensemble can't really keep up with the other actors. And that's no that's no like fault of theirs. It's just the level and caliber of talent is different. Um, I agree with you, too, in terms of having uh, a probably about half to 65 percent of the series in Spanish um, was a benefit not only for the ensemble, but also for Sofia. But I saw in an interview, too, she talked about how and she, this is very out there. Like, if, if you know anything about Sofia Vergara, like she always was very embarrassed by her accent and she always felt very limited in the work she was able to do and mm -hmm. the work she was able to get because of her accent. And she said in the interview that I had seen after I watched the series that it was the first time that she embraced her accent, that something like this came along. And I was like, that's so great. Like that, divine I intervention. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that she is, is so great in the show and um, I am a huge fan of the crime genre. So like this is right up my alley. Mm -hmm. I don't think you know, not that you're not a fan of it, but you don't particularly watch these more so than any other genre. Like this is probably my favorite genre to watch. So I'm yeah. curious because uh, I think even like you're not a, you're not a proponent of like watching a lot of violent things. Right. Like it's just not really what you're no, into. It's not really what I, like when I'm by myself and I'm like, oh, let me put something on. I don't I don't really put like violent war, or, like crime stuff on. Usually I'm much more of like the let's let's cry and like <laughs> overthink <laughs> storylines. <laughs> this is again, it's more it's more I don't want to say cookie cutter, but it is more formulaic in terms yeah. of the story and seeing how it plays out. But I am curious um, because the show is is very brutal. Like there are definitely scenes of brutality in this yeah. series. Uh, How know, did you feel about it in terms of that and not being a mm -hmm. uh, of um, frequent viewer of of sort of violent stories like this? Um, I I think uh, well, it didn't shock me because of again that what you just said the quote that they opened with that she was like the scariest. Uh, what was it? It was like the scariest man I've ever known in the world was a woman. Was, was a woman, and it was yeah. Griselda, Griselda Blanc, which like yeah. great quote, amazing. Um, and so right away I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I know where we're going to go with this. It's going to involve a lot of murdering, um, and just like crime. But I think what they did so well is instead of focusing on, instead of taking the story off from a point of her already being a aggressive and, uh, terrible person they showed her transformation in as starting of somebody who just wants to get out of a bad situation and then growing into this uh drug cartel like running woman that's mm -hmm. running an entire city um which again also great for sofia vergara her changing of each episode and being able to see each strategic moment that makes her character change slightly mm -hmm. um like even from the first time that she actually says to have somebody murdered you can see like okay so this is a pivotal change for her in letting go of her past life and now kind of stepping into the shoes of what she's going to become which i really enjoyed because honestly it, everybody's already seen like, okay, somebody's a badass and wants to just take over the world and kill everybody and make a ton of money. So mm -hmm. let's watch that story. I don't think people want to see that anymore. I think they want to see the internal life of the person and how they became that type. Um, 
I also love that they incorporated so much her, like the earlier steps of her with her sons and her children and watching that, maybe not in the end, but definitely in the beginning of her becoming uh, involved in the drug scene in Miami. She really was doing it for her sons in the beginning, at yeah. least. Um, I agree with you wholeheartedly about the natural crescendo that the show has. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that's what makes it a better show than some of the other formulaic types of shows. Um, <clears throat> even a moment that, oh, and again, we're not going to get into spoilers yet, but there's a moment either towards the end of episode four or in episode five. And again, this is a six episode series where she contemplates doing a decision that she wants to enact herself and she doesn't do it. Mm. And then within literally an episode later, you just see a complete change in her character, yep. but it's earned. And I agree. I think that a big testament of that is um, not only her performance, but the writers and the producers who also did Narcos Mexico, which unfortunately I, I've only seen the first two seasons of the uh, Narcos like proper series that focused on Pablo Escobar. Mm -hmm. So I haven't had a chance to see Narcos Mexico, but that got really great reviews. So I'm sure it's a great series, but I think it's a really good job. Like you said, of really, showcasing all the different sides of Griselda Blanco rather than just being like, oh, she's just a drug kingpin. That's like a psycho. Yeah, like, that's not what they do. Literally. Yeah. Um, should we should we warn for spoilers? No, I don't know. Yeah, I think we, we can could... get into spoilers. I will say the one thing um, if for people that maybe haven't seen this show yet, the with the camera work and the direction, um, kind of what you just said of they lay the groundwork really well. One critique of mine would be they set it up a little bit too well where you then know what's about to happen, mm -hmm. in my opinion, yeah. at least. I, well, I think it's also it's it's because it's it's. It's like basic camera work. It really just sets itself yeah. up for like that formulaic sort of true crime element that so many people are addicted to. It bothers me. Pundit, sometimes, I know. But, but like pundits, I, I shouldn't even say we're pundits, but people that are just like legitimate cinephiles and watch so many different types of film and television and we see the differences between people that are trying to innovate rather than just trying to tell the story and lay the groundwork yeah. i think that's a big difference and and i can understand your critique and why yeah would like i, I would have liked a little bit more from the camera work just to not give some away so much of the plot five seconds before it happens yeah like instead of showing like don't cut to a, a long shot of like the gun that they're about to grab. Yeah. Like just, just let us see the tension build and then grab they it. Have, and, like, in that shoot scene them. that I was just talking about too, uh, the scene that happens either in episode four, or episode five, they actually do the exact opposite of what you're saying. And I think it worked really effectively when she grabs the gun. You know what I'm talking about? We'll get into spoilers. Oh. Maybe. I we'll get into yes, spoilers. I think I know which one you're talking okay, yeah. about. But really quick. When she's supposed to do something else. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, so yeah. For Great, great. I loved that I because agree. I was I was actually surprised. Like a part of me, which I think the reason I don't love some of the like crime fighting it so much is because I'm like, okay, I know what's eventually going to happen, but I just have to watch like a whole fight scene occur first before yeah. we get to the storyline going on. Um, but they didn't. They didn't have like huge long shootouts in this. It was very much uh, like conversation, keeping the story going, and then all of a sudden they'd have like yeah. a quick shoot moment. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely more dramatic than action-packed. Yeah, for sure. It's, yeah. it's telling the story of, of what she's going and it gets gorier. Like they don't hit you with yeah. it right in the beginning. Yeah, but there's some shots. There's in there some. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it hits you towards the end. Um, for the people that are not going to continue our review for right now because they're going to watch the show first. Do you recommend the show? I do. People. I think this is great. I I know we were just talking about it. It's very early to start talking about awards for next year. But I don't think the show as a whole would get that much attention. But I could see um, Sophia Vergara really str at least getting consideration consideration yeah. for it because her performance. Um, yeah, I just think it's it's really good. And I think more and more people as they hear about it will start to watch it, 
which is honestly really great about some of the Netflix shows is they don't have to come out of the gate super strong sometimes in order to read their, reach their audience. They just eventually have to circle back to it. Yeah. I mean, and there's also just such a huge viewership with Netflix over so many other streamers. That I know shows like this that could be buried on other streamers or on network television. They don't get buried as quickly on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you, though. Um, I definitely recommend the show to um, anybody that if you're a fan of of true crime as a genre and you want to see a scripted uh, portrayal of, of what happened with Griselda Blanco, I think they they hit the mark really well in this show. Um, and I definitely recommend it. But if you guys have been following along at this point and you guys haven't watched the show yet um, and you and you care about spoilers, we're going to start spoiler mm -hmm. spoiling Ooh, spoiling uh, spoiling. <laughs> we're going to start spoiling the series as a whole. So you guys have been warned. We're going to go into spoilers. Yep. Go in, binge it. It's an easy yes, binge. Go watch it. It is. It is an easy binge. Yes. Five and a half hours. Yep. OK, three, two, <laughs> one. Spoiler talk. Um, so, yeah, this show, it opens right away with something that uh, is very tension building and we're not even tension building, just immediate anxiety for yeah. the lead character. Um, I wasn't sure at what point in time this was happening either, I which I really no liked. idea what was happening. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, so basically the show open. I mean, you get the quote which is also like a nice quiet lead in. And then it's just the immediate, immediately just franticness from, from uh, Griselda. Yeah. And you discover that she got shot. Um, you, you see that in episode two, but you see that she has, she has an injury and she's freaking out and she's trying, she's in so much pain and she doesn't know how to take care of it herself. Um, and she runs in her bathroom and she's like searching the shelves and grabbing whatever she can. Um, and, it it what like you're saying that one shot we get the first time you really get a good look at her face when she's looking in the mirror when she herself. looks in the mirror which I thought was that's a another part of camera work that I thought was really mm -hmm. well done um and you get this this look of just like holy shit like what who is this woman yeah like, and that's immediately what you think which is great because that's what you want when especially when you're naming I feel like that's always such a weird and a hard thing to market mm -hmm. if they don't like Griselda is the name of the series. Like yeah. if you don't know Griselda Blanco, it's just, it's hard because you're marketing a whole entire show based on the backing of people knowing who this person is. And, and sometimes it doesn't happen. I mean, this is not, but like we talked a couple weeks ago about like Bohemian Rhapsody, like Freddie Mercury is a known name and they, they didn't even <laughs> have the balls to do that. You know what I mean? Like they named it after his, highest selling song mm -hmm. and so i thought that was interesting and how we get that opening um of her with her reflection in the mirror but we very quickly uh start to see the dynamic that she has with her husband and her three sons and we're in medellin so we're in colombia and shit hits the fan pretty quick well she leaves she leaves and we don't know what's happening we yeah. just know that her husband her and her husband got into a fight pretty yes. much. Um, and that she's like, we're going to go to Miami. We're going to escape. And she calls her friend. Her friend's like, you're coming here? What? <laughs> like, what's happening? Yeah, she, she calls her. She calls her and she goes, I'm getting on a flight. Uh, she said, I I'm going to be there tomorrow morning. I'm getting on a flight tonight. And she like just she gets home. She goes. She covers her injury. She wakes up her kids. She goes, we have to start packing. We need to go. And uh, she goes outside. She she looks around to make sure no one's kind of following her or trailing her. And they get in the car and she flies to Miami. Mm -hmm. And so then that kind of jump starts uh, that we get to see her. And uh, Carmen is her friend that she calls. And Carmen is played by Vanessa Ferlito. And you do have she says, I haven't called you in a long time. Like you're an old friend. And that's the only real establishment that you have made between the two of them. But it is pretty quick that you start to see that they have um, a relationship because they used to run drugs together. Yeah. And it's interesting to see that she escapes this whole situation and she gets to Miami and she immediately, even though she's evading all these pressures and this terrifying uh, husband that she has, she immediately wants to just get rid of the coke and start over. Mm -hmm. So she's ready to move on from her life. She's like, I just have to sell this so that I can make enough money so that I can go rent a place or buy a house so that me and my kids can have a start. And her friend Carmen, she's like, that's what they always say. And so like, she's kind of foreshadowing, at least to me, just like, 
you're saying you want to get out, but like, I know you and I know this industry. And like, once you sell one, you want to sell another and you want to sell another. Yeah. Um, which again, I think was just great. Like crumbs. I think they did that really well of being like, this is kind of what's eventually going to happen without completely ruining it for us. And they don't speed it up though, which is no. great. They mm -hmm. like the pacing of the show was really well done. Going back to what I said a little earlier, like the natural progression of the character yep. is like it's a really great character study mm -hmm. for Sofia Vergara. And that's why I think like you were talking about, there needs to be attention on that because there, there's there's so many little elements to her character that you don't see again if you're, if you're trying to tell this in a two hour story and or if you're trying to again make a film that is worthy of what she's gone through so you bloat the runtime yep. it doesn't feel as earned this was like the perfect format in which they could have mm -hmm. done the story and they also didn't like. stretch it out in, into a 10 episode series yeah. they were like let's just do they probably were like okay let's do let's break it out into obviously the first episode and the last episode it's going to have to be how she starts versus how she ends yeah. and then they probably just kept cutting it until they got to the middle episode which the middle episode is is like I think the middle episodes are probably the best of the, the show best. because so and uh the ending of the series uh as I, I'm I'm not going to jump right into it but with the ending of the show I felt like the last episode might have been the weakest and mm. Also, after learning what actually happened, the most impactful part of the last episode is not true, which also bothered me and took it down probably a full point for me. Wait, what part? So, I mean, we're in spoilers. We're so in like, spoilers. Yeah, get so out again, if you haven't. Yes. Well, spoiler warn again because I'm jumping mean, right to the end What's not real? The, show. the sun's so, like... Yeah, so this, sorry, Zach. So the, yeah, sorry, Zach. If you ever watch the show, you can't spoil it. I feel like you knew that anyway. Um, so the show... Uh, there's the big climactic point where June comes in and she tells her that uh, three of her sons had been gunned down. Yeah. And they make it seem like it all happened like around the same time. And mm -hmm. that's not the truth. They all oh, died. At so, so one, they died at all different points. And the other part was that two of her sons died like years before she was. And they just never told her while she was in prison. Or do you know they told her and I mm. think like she was able to go to the funerals and then she had to go back in prison so for the, fa the for the dramatic effect. They wait and they even add the line of dialogue where she's like, I feel like they just waited until they knew you were about to be out to like hit you harder, which that bothers me a little bit because there's so much dramatic tension built up in that moment. And you f you don't feel for Griselda. I mean, at least I didn't. Maybe you did. And, and we can get into that. The psychosis of the character. I felt um, for her at moments. I do. No, I do at moments, but it's not a character that like. This is another thing. You're not said. rooting for her. Well, You're the, not this like. Is so she said in another interview, which I can respect, and I don't think this is really an indictment on her. I think it, again, it comes back to writing and how they wanted to do this. But she's like, I viewed her as like Tony Soprano, and it's like Tony Soprano was beloved despite what he did. Mm -hmm. And I think that she wanted the same effect for this character, and I don't think she got there all the way. Like, there are definitely moments where you feel for her, but there are other moments where you're like, oh, no, she's like a fucking crazy bitch. Like, not that Tony also wasn't like that, yeah. but there was more. And I think David Chase talks about it so a lot about the other side of it where they added the therapy sessions mm -hmm. and that he had an anxiety disorder and that sort of humanized Tony. You don't really get that with Griselda except in the moments with her kids. Mm -hmm. And then there are moments where she completely turns around and, and calls them ungrateful little shits and like and it's because we're seeing what happens to her like losing her mind and becoming a crack addict but like yeah well so like for me throughout the whole show i never was like this woman's insane i was like she makes sense like she i she, did until the until the well, party yes. scene. I, well, I, agree. I, I agree i will say writing wise if they wanted to have a little bit of like admiration for her in the end or like sympathy they should have not shown the full extent of that party well, but that's scene. i don't know if that was what they wanted or if, what or if she that's wanted. what she wanted because well, she was saying it in an interview so i will say because from an acting own. standpoint like one of the basis is that you're never supposed to like hate your look at yourself or, as you're, a villain. Su or yeah. you're supposed to find like an in where you feel empathy or sympathy the humanity within yes the character. you're supposed yeah, to find sure. that and so she probably really found it um but like 
yeah, I didn't think she was crazy until this woman starts like pounding the crack pipe and starts yeah. like the craziest stuff at the party. Shit. Crazy like when shit. <laughs> the guy's on his knees barking, I was like, what's happening right She's now? She's like, take off your clothes take and fuck him. I was like, holy shit. I was like, what are we doing right now? This is wild. It's wild cra- shit, no, it's Zach. crazy, Zach. It's wild actually shit. crazy. Um, so we're going, we're kind of we're going just backwards, around. but you know, what? Uh, but fine, I want to, I do want to go back to the first episode because she gets to Miami. Uh, she meets, uh, Amil Carr in the nightclub and she's really just trying to talk about how much more pure and great the cocaine is in Colombia, which eventually makes its way to Miami because mm-hmm. of her and because of Pablo Escobar in, in real life. And, uh, you see her get sort of, uh, you see her get intimidated and eventually assaulted by the other guy yep uh and the last 10 minutes of that episode like really hooked me Mm -hmm. because you get so you get the first thing where she gets chucho involved which holy like that was a whole other side element that was so interesting to me because he just becomes this dishwasher that literally had nothing he was just there he's like i just moved to america to wash dishes and she's like i need you to be my bodyguard yep like for one night that's for one night i'll pay you two hundred dollars i'll pay you two hundred dollars and you're just my bodyguard for one night he gets involved in this the only like crazy legitimate shootout that is lengthy yeah in the whole entire series um and then you also get these really interesting character moments beforehand with uh, with the guy with the nose. I forget his name. Yeah, where he's like, touch he it. He goes, with touch, touch it. Nose. And I, so I, I thought, <laughs> I love that she asked him your nose because I was confused. Because I thought he was asking for like a sexual favor. And maybe he was in a very weird way. Maybe. And she was like, your nose. Like she took power. Uh, for me, yes. I felt like he was coming at her and in, yeah, insinuating yeah. like a sexual act. And then she, because she always needs to have the upper hand, especially if she's dealing with like drug dealers, she then flipped it. And yeah. then he was like, oh, wow. She's and he good. strokes He's like, her. She's she, or good. She strokes his nose. <laughs> Just such a weird and this man throws his head back and cackles. <laughs> Literally crazy. That dude is like one of my favorite character actors from that one moment. Like mm-hmm. it's so ridiculous. But so then we get the huge shootout, and then that just immediately throws you and thrusts you into this wild story and this wild ride that we're on um with Griselda in general. Um and then you start to sort of see this develop where she um, gets some of the prostitutes uh, from Miami. And that's so that's another thing. I actually just read this right before we started recording. Um, it says, and this is according to Wikipedia, so take it as, as you want. <laughs> but it says that it was speculated that she engaged in prostitution to support herself financially early on in her life, but she always denied that. So that's another interesting foil that mm. I'm, I'm interested in how they lump that story together with the prostitution immediately. Like, I'm curious how she actually got the drugs over. Cause that's a kind of a big substantial thing in the beginning of the story, how she has the prostitutes mm-hmm. sort of bring the cocaine over with Arturo. Well, she probably still could have had them, but she maybe just denied that she took part in it. Took like w- d- actually did it. Yeah. I mean, because at one point, maybe when, the drug cartel like ran prostitution as well as well, drugs. Well, in they Medellin. say at one point it's a very quick line, but they say that she learned how to counterfeit. Yes. The, and so like, you don't know, she could have been working at the like with the prostitutes, but really just counterfeiting money yeah, and working for the guy that owned that. Yeah, that's true. House. That's fair. So that's you don't true. know fully. Um, also, like she she could just be a liar and just be like she was doing it, but she doesn't want the world to know yeah, that. That's true. Um, but so a lot of them come over and she has this relationship with Arturo, who I thought was another uh, really good ensemble member of, mm-hmm. of the show. He was played by uh christian tappan uh and the first introduction you get to him uh he's kind of the only guy still in columbia that she can trust as soon as she gets to miami Mm -hmm. and uh you can tell that he's flirtatious with her and he's just one of a long line of men within this series that have a sexual infatuation Mm -hmm. with griselda which um based on what we do know of the true story i don't know if that was real or not yeah like we've uh to each their own i have looked at pictures of the real griselda and i don't picture like the drug world being infatuated with her i could be wrong i i could be maybe it was that they were infatuated with the um empowerment and the like confidence that she brought into the room um but a part of me thinks that they sprinkled that tidbit in because sofia vergara is is just absolutely drop dead gorgeous and they were like 
we can't act like she's not a rat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a fair point. Um, and so, yeah, she's starting to establish herself or she wants to try to establish herself in Miami. And then we get the, within all the middle episodes, a lot of interactions between Griselda and different men throughout the Miami drug trade. Mm -hmm. Emil Carr being the most prominent of them yep. that are constantly shutting her down. Um, Which I really love all these um, side characters. You never really know whose side they're on. And they're very shifty characters, all of them, because you don't know. Obviously, she can't really trust anybody, but some of them make you do believe that they also aren't on the team of the people that they're already working for and that they would easily come to her side. So I think they do that. Um, they lay that groundwork really nicely in the beginning of showing how shifty some of these people are. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're very easily persuade. Mm -hmm. they, they can just do anything because at the end of the day, they just want money. Yeah, they don't really care. More money means that they can do more drugs themselves and then mm -hmm. they're not putting themselves in a precarious position. Um, I do think it's interesting too, though, how naturally as the series gets more serious with how she's rising to power, <coughs> excuse me, you start to see the violence really hit a, a crazy point where people are getting beheaded. Oh my God, people I People are getting, I mean, children, which Jesus, like- Children are getting killed. Children like are getting killed. And uh, I'm curious what you thought. So- um, I don't want to, I, before I get into it, I guess she, what, one of the most important uh, and crucial parts of the whole entire series um, as a side story for Griselda is her relationship with Dario. Mm -hmm. And Dario is played by Alberto Guerra, who I, next to her is probably my favorite performance in the whole entire show. And he adds this real level of humanity to his character that uh, I think is needed mm -hmm. in, in a situation in which all these people are the worst of the worst, but he, and, and he does it in a way. And again, this is, I think a credit to the writing as well. He's not doing it. Like she talks about how he's my protector, but so many times he just wants her to talk. Yeah. He's like, I just want you to tell me exactly how you're feeling. Cause I know that you're trying to hold things back because you're trying to act like this tough woman. And, but again, so I'm, I'm curious your thoughts. Like, do you think any of that? I mean, that's probably just an added layer of romance and drama, right? Like, how much of that do we do we think is real? A part of me thinks it's real because she did have a son with him. Mm -hmm. But uh, it probably wasn't so black and white, his transition of becoming a good guy, quote unquote. Yeah. Because I think story-wise, they did it pretty seamlessly where he starts off kind of this dark figure that just like, kills people when needed and she's starting off as like a woman that just needs to get money and so she's selling coke and then when she crosses that line it's, it's a whole flip it's a whole flip where yeah. then the moment she starts taking a dark turn is when he starts seeing the light and so it's really great writing probably wasn't that way in real life yeah I would have they to probably assume. went longer of like loving being in the drug world together and then I probably I think that it probably does have to do with her um, the son that they had together. Mm. That was a big turning point in their relationship. Yeah. I'd speculate. Yeah. But I don't know. But I thought he was really great. Um, One of my other favorites was Rivy. Rivy was good too. I loved his character because he, he was, was very just unique. That sn like he was just no, so like snaky vibes. Yeah, yeah. I really loved his character. What did you think of uh how he's able to get Griselda's sentence down? And and by the way, as crazy as some of these things that seem factual may not be, this is 1000% factual, yeah. which is why I think they, I mean, again, sometimes it's like we talked about in the Iron Claw, like there's certain things within that movie that it's too uh, wild to believe. So they, they, they don't even like sort of dive into that sort of territory. Mm -hmm. With this, um, Griselda eventually gets imprisoned mm -hmm. uh, and they get her on drugs uh, at first and then they wind up trying to get her for murder and they think they have it because they, they... They have Rivi to... They convict Rivi. Yeah. And uh, he has a handler who was a woman that worked for uh, the, the DA. DA's office and uh, they start engaging in phone sex. And it gets her out. It drops her sentence down and she gets of the I think it was 11 years in prison total or 13 years, 13, 13 years in prison total when she was up for the death penalty. Yes. Which is insane, insane to go from death penalty to only 13 years. All <laughs> so because crazy. this guy 
who was conniving enough was conniving enough to convince to con- flip a DA assistant into having a relationship with him that then broke up his entire their entire out like reasoning to get her uh f- like found it was crazy yeah, it's wild i'll say i had no idea what they were doing when the phone call started i was like okay i was like they have one moment they have one moment within when they capture him and they have him talking where they show an angle of the DA looking at him and like biting her lip. I saw that too, but, but I just quick. didn't know the motive of the directing yes. of why I was like, and it makes sense now, but literally there was a moment where I was like, why are they showing this right now? Yeah. Like, what, oh, I felt similar. In what world is this needed? Relevant to the plot. To the, yes. And I was it, like, it winds up being probably the, the most relevant part the of the entire plot. plot point plot. ever. And um, I love it because they also set it up really nicely where when Griselda sees Rivi in the uh like police department or whatever, mm-hmm. and he says, She's like, like, why would you do like you said that we were lovers in a past life? And he was like, Well, I wouldn't die for you though. And so he I wouldn't, he's I wouldn't die for you in this life. I wouldn't die for is, you in this life. Yes. Which he's not saying like I'm fucking you over. Yeah. He's just saying, like, I'm not taking the death penalty for yeah, you. Yeah. Um and that, like, it's just, it was brilliant. And then the, that lawyer, twist. the lawyer on the phone with her, and he just goes, by the way, Rivi has one more thing to let you know. <laughs> Dan, the whitest dude ever just being like, day nada. I was just like, this is great. Um, but yeah, that, uh, so Rivi is played by Martin Rodriguez. He's and great. I'm he's looking really at his IMDb good. too, and this is actually only his ninth credit. He was so great. he's a he's a relatively fresh actor. And I do. So I, I really hope that a lot of the performers within the show start to get more attention, including Sophia, yeah. who obviously had has the biggest name, probably the only actor within the series to American audiences, obviously, that have name recognition. Mm-hmm. Um, and you talked a little bit about how and I hope as well that she starts to get more attention and notice for doing dramatic work because she completely transforms within this role. But some of these other performers, I also hope can make a great transition over to the States so we can start yeah. to see them do other work. Um, because a lot of them, it's not just Spanish speaking. They do a lot of English speaking within the show as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Dario and Rivi were too. Um, June uh, stuck out to me as like a side, um, uh, police officer character. Yep. I do think they had a lot of really nice layers to her, uh, that she was played by Juliana Aden, uh, Martinez. And uh, out of her kids, I actually really liked uh, Uber or um, it's it's spelled like Uber, Uber, but I think it's Uber is how it it's is. pronounced. And that was um, that was played by Jose Velasquez. And the kids don't have a lot of big moments early on, but in his scenes, way more than uh, Dixon, who's played by Orlando Pineda. He does a really great job of playing the subtlety of how he's not approving of anything his mother does. But he's just watching. Yes. He's not saying anything. Exactly. And I think I think that uh, the ensemble does a really great job here and sort of elevates the material. Um, and I think the writing and the acting together just makes it a really nice package. Yeah, no, I think I think it's really great. And look, you said it perfectly. The more into the drug world she gets, the worse the crimes become. Um, and I mean, I don't know what part for you was the like flip of the switch, but for me, it was when they were going after the witness so that she become partners with, oh, with the, um, the witness. Yeah. Um, for with the wife and the child, the baby. And when he calls her and is like, what do you want me to do? And she's like, she says, do it, do it. That for me was when the shoe dropped. And I was like, episode three. I want to say I think it's end episode, of episode three or a, beginning of episode four. It's right around there. I think it's end of episode three. OK, yeah, I thought so, too, Um, because I think episode four is when they is when the rampage starts of her starting bringing over the Cuban um, bringing refugees o- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and trying to just start this drug war. She she literally she literally <laughs> she elevates and escalates the situation so much. By bringing over all these um, Cuban men to do her dirty work. Mm-hmm. And I also love the scene. It's a power move. I, I don't know how you felt about the scene, uh, which was another scene. And this is th- why I think the pacing is so important in the show. Another scene in which uh, we have um, the mother of the one guy that dies mm. come to her in the middle of the night in the rain. Yep. 
And she's like, I need to talk to Griselda Blanco. And you're like, who the fuck is this lady? Yeah, yeah, like, she hasn't she, been in the show the whole time. She's not relevant. And she t- she's like, my, she goes, I always imagined that my son would grow old and have this life. And he's gone now. And he, he, people say you're the godmother. And like, and she basically convinces this woman of being like, what your son did for me is very important. I'm going to be looking out for you for the rest of your mm-hmm. life now. And, and <laughs> the mother's like, yeah, well, I hope all my sons work for you. And I'm like, <laughs> holy shit. Like your son just died, but there's so much of a belief too. And I am curious. I want your thoughts on the wand because the wand was very prominent within the show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and by wand, I'm talking about every time she's in the backyard or at a different location, smoking a cigarette, she would put the cigarette up to like the location and she would basically do like, like fairy godmother, like right over, like whoever it was. Um, I didn't think much of it until the scene on the beach with her kids. Mm. And at that point, now I, I do think I agree with you. The do it is like the big, like obvious. Oh, like this is a turning point when she does that over her kids. To me, I, I felt like everything really flipped. Like there was mm. something in her brain that was so beyond repair at that point. I mean, she had already done so much. That's when they went to California, right? When yeah. On the and, beach? And, and she's, she's talking about, she's talking about like, and she gives them the, the stone, but she still has all these intentions of, of selling drugs. Like, even though they frame it like she doesn't, she obviously does. She's just giving them to Rivi to, to distribute. So to me, it, it's just it's the character is so haunting. And that was a really nice, subtle detail that they call her. The, they called her the godmother that that the creator sort of put in there. I don't yeah. know if it was Sophia's I don't, yeah. thought to do it. But what did you what did you think of those scenes? Um, specifically the ones when she's tracing. Yeah, like what did you like? I don't know. At first, I was like, "What? Why are we doing this?" I was like, "What is the point of this?" But then I kept thinking, I was like, "Maybe it's just something that people saw the actual Griselda do in life, and they were like, yeah, this chick was weird,' and would just start like tracing <laughs> things with her cigarette, and maybe that was just something that Sophia was like, that's important for some reason. I need to have it in there. Um. Because I think it also, I don't know, it opened up the thoughts of her living kind of like a dream world a little bit of yeah. like, we'll figure it out. Like, no matter what we have to do, like, the the thing that we want to happen will happen. Yeah. In a way. Well, she has such an infatuation with the moniker of being called godmother to all these people. Yeah. And I just felt such a, I don't know, I felt the connection with the fact that it was like she was just trying to bibbity boppity boo everybody through her crazy life mm-hmm. and she was going to carry everybody until the end until she sort of lost it. Yeah. Um, and I actually did just see something as we're recording, uh, which is kind of crazy to me, um, though I do think it's deserved because I think it's a really good show. Um, as of the time that we're recording this, Griselda is the highest rated film or TV show that she's ever appeared in on Rotten Tomatoes. So it That's has Sophia Vergara. Yes. Wow. So it has 88% on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics. Uh, 85% was Modern Family. Her previous high was 87%, which was Chef, mm-hmm. um, John Favreau's film. Um, so yeah, I mean, there, there's it's it's a really great story of just playing out this real life account of this woman that was tired of being um, dissuaded by men, and she was told that she couldn't do anything within the drug trade mm-hmm. and. She made up for it, and obviously then some, if Pablo Escobar said what he said, if that was true, that quote. Um, and yeah, I mean. She uh, lived her American dream. She, seriously. She did it. Which is <laughs> so crazy. It's crazy, but she did. Um, should we talk about when the uh, the scene I was alluding to earlier? With oh, the, when she was attempting to like yes. behead somebody? Yeah, do you, want to, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, so she is in the middle of this drug war, essentially, where she is going against, um, oh, what's the family's name? The, like, or... Uh, Give me a second. Ochoas. Ochoas. Yeah. And it's, they're killing people, she's killing people, and they're just going back and forth on this, and so then... They're from the Bahamas. That's where they they bought an island there to keep all uh, their drugs, essentially. And she is going to kill one of their people, yes. essentially. And she's like, I have to go because they need to know that I can do this and that I'm not just sending people out to do it. It's me doing it. Mm-hmm. And this is after also uh, she her, had best, already... her friends literally were beheaded. 
Yes. And left and in front the, of the probably, house. Probably the most graphic scene in the whole show. Absolutely. I didn't expect it, to be honest. Like, yeah, when I, mean, I saw the machete, because I saw the, the two men walking in and I saw the machete, I was like, oh, wow. I was like, okay, so they're going to do beheading. I was like, okay, great. But you didn't think you were going to say I it. didn't think they were going to show them laying in front of the house, like, burning. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrifying. It's crazy. And so then she was like, I have to answer back essentially. And she goes to do this. They've already shot two or three people in the house. And then they have this one man just lifted over the countertop, like literally ready. And they give her the sword and everything. And she is about to do it. And the guy's like, please don't do this. Please don't do this. Did you think she was going to do it or no? No, I knew that as soon as he started pleading, she that she was gonna. She was. She didn't approach that point yet. She just didn't. In terms of the character for me, yeah, I would argue that like, okay, killing somebody's one thing, beheading. Yeah, it's 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 dark. It's very dark. It is. And so, like you were alluding to before, it was a very quick change of her being like, okay, I'm not going to behead him, but I'm definitely going to shoot and kill this guy right yeah, now. Just and grabs so, the gun off Dario's waist belt and just shoots him shoots like four him. times in the head. Which is a big turning point also because that's the first person that she's killed after her husband. Yes. Which we get the reveal, it, I believe, at the very end of episode one. So it's right. It is. Um, yeah. So it's right after the shootout when she makes her first drug deal with uh nose guy. I forget his character name. Yeah. Big nose guy. And by the way. That is probably, which is also crazy, that's like probably the second most graphic scene in the whole show when the shootout begins and you see the machete through the guy's cheek. Oh, yeah. I was like, whoa, there's a whole different show. Yeah. Like, I was like, I thought this was going to like, obviously a lot of a lot of tell don't show. And then as soon as the guy walks in, like there's a giant yeah. machete sticking out. I didn't love that part, though. It seemed a little like. You thought it was shock value ish? Yes. OK, interesting. I did. It felt a little gimmicky. OK. Rather than real. I would agree with you if what happened didn't precede it. <laughs> if beheadings weren't shown. I guess. I think that I think that's just, I think it was maybe the camera work of like them showing it like directly. Well, yeah, they on. they show they show you essentially it like, like looks, a POV it literally looks the, like three D, like I was in a movie theater and yeah. it was coming out. Yeah, me. that's I think. So I wish a, they did that a yes. little bit differently. But right after right after um she's kind of hiding out and they t they say lady go home. Mm -hmm. Um and that's that's uh that's what that's Rivy. Yeah. Who who's in that scene. Um, which I forgot about until just now. Um, right after that, they show the flashback of her killing Alberto and the driver uh, and escaping. And then her husband, we go back to Miami. Yeah, yeah Alberto. Because was you her, find, her find out that he was indebted to his brother and ended up forcing her to sleep with her his own brother. Yeah. <sighs> whole nother level. That's a whole other like something. And I'm curious. Imagine. I don't know if I wonder if that's true. If that's true or not. I wonder. Or I mean, because they, they, they allude a lot. They call her a whore. They say she's used to doing things like this. But if she wasn't a prostitute in real life, I mean, again, we don't know the real accounts yeah. of the real conversations that were had. But I am curious. Um, but yeah, so the shooting after her attempted beheading is the first time that you see her having killed somebody that she never knew, essentially. Yes. Because it was that her, it was her husband. And even um, Dario says at one point, he's like, it's different than killing your husband who you've hated for yeah. like years and like had resentment toward. Like mm -hmm. it's different killing a, a nobody. Yeah. Um, and I think that also is another change of like her then doing that for the first yeah, time. Yeah, for sure. No, it's interesting. There's a lot of there's a lot of changes where you're like, where's this woman gonna go to? Yeah. And if the party scene. Yeah, the party scene is definitely the craziest part of the show. Uh, where she gets crazier and crazier and crazier. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a wild show. And I, I so I do think going back to what you said earlier on, this is a minor gripe, but I do think that that was projected very early in that episode, and that bothered me. But the acting was so good that the craziness that was going to happen. It. Well, because her and Rivi start to have those kind. Like I don't love that they started showing Rivi whispering in her ear in the nightclub. And then he's like, oh, like, what was that about? And she's like, it's just the Rivy thing. And I'm like, I don't mm. love that because immediately I was like, she's going to blame the husband for everything. That's how I felt. Okay. I don't know if you felt similar. I didn't pick up that, but I picked up early on that all of a sudden paranoia was going to be huge in this episode. Which it definitely is. Which the whole episode was her just paranoid. And just smoking crack and being paranoid. I, 
It's the name of my novel. <laughs> <laughs> Just smoking crack and getting paranoid. Just kidding, everybody. Relax. <laughs> no, but she literally, she, Zach. <laughs> Let's read, let's read it in. Let's read it in, everyone. <laughs> I'd rather not read it in. Let's in keep that, it right here. In that episode, <laughs> she ruined it for herself, you yeah. could say. She honestly could have gone out unscathed in this entire thing if she didn't smoke crack at a party and think everybody was out to get her and then tried to kill everybody <laughs> no, there. She literally it's tried. Crazy. She shot up a car. In front of the did entire think, party. Did you think she was going to kill him in front of everybody? No, no. I, I didn't, didn't either. But, but then would... I did think she was going to kill Carmen. Oh, well, yes. I yeah, thought she well, was going to kill she her. She would have killed Carmen if it wasn't for Dario yes. kind of storming in. Um, and then the moment that Carmen left, I was like, that bitch is going to the police <laughs> as she yeah, should. Oh, as sure. she should. For sure. Um, but yeah, she she literally self deprecated herself yeah, completely. Absolutely. If she had just gotten out when she started feeling the paranoia, she probably would not have gotten arrested or even she would have just who knows been in California living her life. But she just felt like everybody was against her. There's a lot of emotionally heightened moments in that party scene too, with a lot of different characters. I mean, mm -hmm. you see the son Dixon get into a huge yep. fight with somebody because he's using so much. Um, you get the scene with Uber uh, sitting with. Um, Griselda and her mm -hmm. finally calling him an ungrateful little shit, which is crazy because he's like the most calm person in the whole entire yeah. show. You hear that the three year old is drinking his chocolate milk with a Coke straw. Yeah. No, like, was it? No, not Michael. Ozzy. Yes, no, Michael. Was it Michael? Michael, they say he, that's when Uber walks oh. in and is like, Michael's drinking chocolate milk out of a Coke straw. Another and fun. She's like, it's fine. No, I know. It's crazy. Fine. Another yeah. fun tidbit, though, about her life that is real. Is that her son's name is Michael Corleone. That's crazy. Off of The Godfather, which is another part of the reason she's just so obsessed with this moniker of being that she's like... being given. So she literally names her son after the character in The Godfather, which is so crazy. <laughs> like, it's so wild to me that like two things within the show that are like are actually real. That seem like crazy. Yeah, so insane. Like, real. yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, one of the other things I read beforehand, which uh, again, might play into the fact that you really would have had no empathy for her, which you shouldn't anyway, but um, there's a whole nother tidbit that they don't describe where she killed her first husband mm -hmm. as well. So this woman is three for three and murdering her husband, which is because there was a husband before the husband, before the one that they introduced to start the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Griselda Blanco has murdered three of her husbands, killed all three. And because did you expect her to go after Dario in the end or no? No. So I actually thought, that was going to be um, uh, Ochoa's men uh, killing Dario and the son. I did too, out of spite, mother. because yes. they couldn't get her. Yes, I thought I the did same too. thing. Um, and it's sad. It's tragic. I, I mean, Dario sort of, again, has that that character turn, and the performance is really well, and you, you want and you hope and you think he kind of made it off. Um, maybe just don't go back to fucking Medellin. He should have grabbed his mother and went somewhere else. Yep. But instead, he's gone. I will say, I think the saddest part <clears throat> is when they're going after, uh, who, who is it, Chucho? Chucho and, and his son. And yeah, they, so yeah. we did we did allude earlier. But yeah, so Chucho, the, the, the dishwasher, that again, like just to see the transformation of where he started from mm -hmm. and then getting to where he is. But also his, the steps through his process of like him sweating in the car while they're doing like. To sawing off body parts to, in a bathtub. Yes. Yeah. What? Like, that's crazy. It's wild. It's wild. It's so crazy. And though. then eventually, like, you f see him with a, with a, like, a, a baby. He's living a family, a family life family in a nice life. residential yep. home. And it seems like he's wanting to get out. And then the night of the paranoia, they're like, he's doing it. He's telling the police. Like, we need to go after him now. Yeah. And even Rivy has, when you think Rivy's going to go down this weasel, I mean, he is a weasel, but he's like going down this real genesis and formation of like it's me and, and griselda against the world she's like it's him he's, he's the motherfucker like, that did it and he's like i don't it's think not, so it's not it's you can't do it without and then she's like you need to go kill him i'm tired like, of men telling me yeah. that i need to be protected i was like holy yeah. shit well and then he says he's like you can't just kill people because of a, a hunch he's like you have to have proof yeah and she's like i don't care and then he ends up going to 
teach him a lesson yeah. is what they say. And he ends up killing his what two year old son uh, accidentally accidentally not knowing that he's in the car. But yes, his two year old son who's in the backseat of the car. Chucho evades him, gets away. Uh, but his son, unfortunately, passes away. And you see uh, all of uh, her kids like reacting and yeah. being like his son is which like I the Dixon response of her son who was like you need to go teach him a lesson and then being like oh my god I can't believe you did that like I just wanted you to teach him a lesson what do you think your mother was gonna do I mean yeah she's a drug lord of course she's gonna go <laughs> shoot with him up and like tr possibly kill him not teach what she's gonna sit him down and slap him yeah I know yeah it's crazy it's crazy it's a crazy story it's a wild story it's a, it's a really good series uh, one last thing for me, I really like the um, the how they were able to play period within this, mm. and the, the uh, you I would have liked to see a little bit more of Miami, uh, but I just think it's a really great picturesque sort of way to put you in that time period again. But yeah. they do a good job with the nightclubs, um, and I did like early on uh, episode two. I, I really like the sequence where um, not Carmen, but her other friend, one of the ones that gets beheaded. Uh, says like, come on, we got to go party. The Griselda I know. And they have like that crazy scene where they're oh. like riding old men because they've never taken cocaine Isn't before it, um, in the nightclub. Who's or the, it's like a country club. They're not even yeah, in like a nightclub. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, that's how she's able. I think able... it's Carol G. Isn't <clears throat> it? Might be. Yeah. The oh, the, the Oh, you're talking about the actress? Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's Carol G. Because really? I know she's in this. Is she? Yeah. Yeah, she Carla? plays the friend. Yeah. Okay, so she plays the friend. Okay, I didn't know that. I don't know. I know Carol G by name. I don't know her by face. So yep, Carol she plays, G, the she pop, plays the friend pop with singer, like the bangs, right? Yes. Yeah. So she is the one that's like, come on, we got to go out and party, and that's how she starts to get her first clientele, mm -hmm. and she's selling off cocaine. Um, so I think the period nature was good. I think the show as a whole is really good. Um, we both hope Sofia Vergara gets some awards consideration, yeah. but my fear, which I said off camera earlier is that the show is January 29th and last year's Emmys were a couple weeks ago, which means by the time this is in the zeitgeist again, we're talking at least like seven, eight months. So I do think that there is a chance. Um, I would love to, I mean, based on it's very early in the year, but this is, I don't know. Cause Daisy Jones on the six premiered March eight or March 3rd. Yeah. And this is January 24th. So 25th. it's, so it's possible. Depends on how many series come out. Limited yeah, series. Limited series. Um, I've only watched, I think three shows so far this year, but this is definitely my favorite mm. of the year so far in the limited time that it's I've my watched only shows. show that I've watched. It's my favorite. So far. <laughs> <laughs> um do you have anything else you want to say or do we go into scores no i think we can go into scores um honestly if white lotus wasn't about to be in like it's like later series a part of me would be like oh she could be a good fit for like another series but i don't know if they'd bring her on vergara you're talking about yeah mm -hmm. i don't know if i want to i don't know if i want to see her on white lotus why because i think it's too if they did white like, like I, I i really depend on how they wrote her character yeah but if they did like cabo and she was like one of the workers. Maybe. Or like she was running the hotel. That's a possibility. Like the Sabrina. Um, I forget her last yeah, name. What's but her, the Sabrina you know Impacciatori, I think yeah, is her I last name so. or something like that. Um, I could see something like that for her. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know because White Lotus just feels similar to me where it's like I just picture that vibe for her just by looking at her and I don't want – after seeing her in something like this, not that I want her to like mm -hmm. pull a Charlize and just like start doing shit like Monster, which she obviously did in this, but like don't <laughs> keep doing that all the time. But I want to see her playing like different sorts of things and I feel like White Lotus is too typical of what you would expect her to do next. Yeah, but I want – I if she does another like drug – no, thing. I don't want that either. Uh, she's got I want like a different. straight drama. I want I want a straight drama where she could show her acting chops because she obviously has them and she showcases them in this. And she is really funny though. So like she that's is. kind of why I'm like maybe go back to comedy in a way without being the character that she was on Modern Family. If I could cast her in any comedy right now, I want her as a guest role as a substitute teacher in Abbott Elementary. Or the Spanish teacher that they never introduced. Just make her a series regular. <laughs> I would love that. But I kind of want to see. I would rather her see her at, like drama. in a random like like scene in the bear. No. 
I could. I could. Well, I would. I, would I mean, maybe you could. Maybe. I mean, maybe you could. I mean, again, it's like I don't. Like wanna... she's like one of the because I feel like the bear. Total side note, but the bear <laughs> is going to start bringing on oh, just the, everybody, every person that wants to be on it. Yeah, and that is just going to be sitting down at a table and be like, waiter. That's waiter. true. That's true. <laughs> like, well, that's I will, it. and I know I don't think you've watched it yet. And this is another side note. That's shout out to Michael because we talked about this. Um, I started Dave season three. Oh, okay. And wow. Great. Like the, the thing is the cameos like if Dave Bird was able to get the cameos he got for season three of Dave, which is a great show, but has not gotten any awards consideration. The bear, the bear could arguably be the biggest television show ever made mm -hmm. because of the amount of people that they can get for it. And you just get a glimpse of it within the Thanksgiving episode. Yeah. So I'd be interested. I want to see. Um, I hope she does more. I personally hope she does more dramatic stuff, but I do appreciate her comedic. Um talent and mm -hmm. i think her opposite ed o'neill was so great on modern family for so many years um but yeah uh you want to give a score let's go on to scores right. um i really enjoyed this i'm uh gonna go high with it but i'm not gonna give it a perfect score because the camera work for me let it down a little bit where i wasn't i knew where the story was going a little bit too early so i'm gonna give it a solid nine though okay Mm -hmm. I'm a little under you. I enjoyed it a so lot. I, I really, I really enjoyed it too. Um, I agree that like some of it, some of it feels a little formulaic. Um, I do unfortunately think that's a lot of Netflix type stuff too. It's like, if you do this on HBO, is it that formulaic? Um, but I do think it's still one of the better shows that I've seen from Netflix in mm -hmm. a while. Um, I like the vibe that they do. Uh, I thought the, again, the, the pacing and the writing are, are really strong in this show. Um, I do like that they had a singular voice in terms of direction. Andres yep. buys does the whole entire series, which I think definitely benefits it. Um, but, uh, yeah, some of the dramatic stuff that they added in for more dramatic tension, even though the story is as brutal and, um, I mean, I don't know. She's she's just a crazy. She was a crazy woman. She she was vicious. It was fascinating to see that sort of unfold. Uh, but I am going to give it an eight point five, which I still think it's a really good limited series for Netflix. And I'm excited to see what she does next and what some of these other ensemble mates also do going forward. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Me too. All right, guys. That was our review and discussion on Griselda. You guys can watch it all on Netflix right now. It's six episodes. It's about five and a half hours of length. Yep. Um, hopefully, Sofia Vergara gets some awards attention. What did you, if you guys did watch the series, what did you guys think of it? What's your score? Do you think that it's worthy of her to get some awards consideration for this performance? Uh, what would you like to see Sofia Vergara do next and some of the other talent that's involved in the show? You guys, if you like this conversation, please give this video a like and you guys can subscribe to us. We are the Culture Wave Media Network. You can also follow us on social media. We're at Cinema Wave Media. We're on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Threads. We also have at underscore Culture Wave Media and at Jersey's Finest Pod for our other podcasts on Instagram as well. Just signing off, I am Darian Scalamoni. I am Liz Seiko. And we'll see you guys next time.